So if you're in web development, you'll know that a lot of the work that you end up doing is building out forms and adding validation to forms and basically tracking when people type into inputs and select certain radio boxes. And the whole process can get pretty tedious. And I wanted to show you my approach that I like to take when it comes to forms and what libraries I tend to use. And the best way to kind of exemplify that is to show you my current state of how I'm kind of doing a form and like the way that you might start doing in React if you're kind of new. Um, before you reach out to a third-party library. So I have some changes on my main branch down here. Um, and I wanted to kind of show you how I'm handling a form. You saw on the page I have like a prompt and I have a color where I'm setting up some state for the form. And then down here I have inputs that basically bind to that form state. So for example, this prompt, I have an input where when I type into the input, I basically update the form and I call like this helper function, which basically takes the event and then it takes the key and it updates my form using the key. It's a lot of boilerplate, it's kind of tedious and you end up having to do this on like all your projects. Um, so there's some opportunities to kind of drive that up with a third party library. And then also I bind to form.prompt here. And then down here, I also have to do the same thing with the radio buttons where I set it to checked or not checked based on the color in the form and compare it to my color. And then if I click on the radio button, I do the same thing. I set the form and technically this thing should probably call update form like this. I don't know why that's not doing that. I should probably say color here and that would probably make it a little bit cleaner. But regardless, you end up doing this stuff. And then when you add in validation, you have to do this, all this custom logic. I mean, you can do like HTML5 like validation and say like required and stuff like that. But at some point you're going to need custom validation. So that brings me to my point of what form library do I typically use in my React projects. Uh, I've been using a lot of React hook forms. It's really easy to kind of get set up. I'll show you my code and how it kind of works, but it kind of like just dries up a little bit of the repetitive stuff that you end up doing in like every single form. And it gives you like a nice interface to kind of interact with your forms. I do believe it also is pretty performant. It kind of makes your forms be uncontrolled. So every time you type into like a form input, it doesn't like redraw everything. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, if you look down here, it basically says or it removes the amount of re-renders that happen when you're de dealing with forms. So basically when you have larger forms that have a bunch of inputs and a bunch of like fields, every time you type, um, you know, the way React works is basically gonna re-render your entire page when you change some type of state in your hooks. Not the most optimal experience when you, when you have like 10 or 20 different form input boxes. But let me show you my other code and I'll kind of show you how you can kind of start using this library a little bit. And I decided to just kind of show you the code and talk about it instead of actually like coding something in front of you because I do think it's kind of the same beneficial to have someone kind of walk you through what's going on. So the first thing is instead of having that use state where I have like my custom form object, I'm just saying use form. And since I'm using TypeScript, I can pass it a generic type here. I can say like this form has a prompt and it has a color and they're both strings. And when you do that, it gives you back an object here that you can use later on to kind of register your inputs to the, the hook library. And then also you have like a callback function you can use for when the form gets submitted. Okay, so that's kind of like the main changes. Again, like we don't have to make our own state variable here. We can just kind of use the hook and that takes care of the state for us. Scroll down a little bit and let's kind of see how we're attaching the hook library to our inputs. So the way you can do it is you basically take your input and you pass it some props. And in this case, I'm just doing a spread operator on the register function. So again, register was kind of provided to us as a function from this hook library. And on every single input, you just call it and you pass the name that you want inside your form state. So it's very similar to how we had it before prompt and color, but when you basically submit the form, you'll now have an object that has a prompt property and a color property. And the cool thing is you can actually add some different requirements, right? So you can add different options. One is required, but I do believe you can add like regex requirements and stuff. Mm -hmm. If you scroll down for the options, it looks like you can pass it a regular expression that kind of verify that the input matches a certain criteria. Um, you could say value as date. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do to kind of like just make the whole process a little bit easier. Sometimes you need custom validation as well, which you can, I believe you can do. So that's kind of how you like register the, your inputs to the actual like hook library. But what about when you submit, right? So if you go down here, there is a submit button. And when you click on the submit button, it basically submits the form. So let's look at the form and we have an on submit. And the difference is you basically call the handle submit function that the hook library gives you and you pass it 
your own custom function. So this is like a, a higher order function. It takes in a function and returns a wrapped function. If you scroll up here, we have the actual submit function that I wrote, which is only gonna ever get invoked if everything in your form validates correctly. And when it does, you get back your form data. And the cool thing about this is this is gonna be automatically typed for you. So you have your color and your prompt and all the other things that will exist on your form that you might be uh, interested in reading. And then you can kind of use that data and submit it to the back end as needed. So let's say you wanted to like listen for when the form changes. Uh, because of the way the inputs are kind of like uncontrolled, you don't know when stuff is being typed into. So if you wanted to do some custom logic for whenever the form changes, there's a watch method you can use. And you can basically say watch. And whenever the form changes, you can just go ahead and use, do something with that data, right? So I'm gonna say watch, and then we're gonna get back the form data. Technically, I can call this form data. And right now, I'm just going to console log it every time I type. So let's just re type in something here. Notice that as I type, we get the data as it gets changed, right? If I click on these different things, um, well, that's a bug. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say color on, um, but yeah, you get, you get the point. I think the issue is I need to provide a default color value to this. Let's see if this works. I'm doing some live debugging for you all. Well, it's not really live because I just kind of went to Stack Overflow. Let's click on yellow and make sure it prints the yellow. Okay, so I had the, um, the approach kind of a little bit wrong. But you'll see here when I change the form inputs, it basically prints out the current data. I don't know why it's printing out so many times. It prints out five different times. So maybe there's a lot of extra like um, logic going on. To be honest, I'm not an expert at this library. I'm just kind of sharing with you what I've been kind of using. And I've been using like the bare minimum on my side projects. But another important thing to kind of talk about is the errors object. So as you're like submitting the form and if there's errors on the form, you can render out different things. So for example, I think I require the colors to be selected. And if you want to print out something custom below your thing, below your input, you could say errors.color. And if this thing is not defined, so I could do like a not here, I could just go ahead and print, print out like a message that says like, you must select a color, right? So let's go back and let's just go ahead and refresh the page because I already selected a color and there's a giant error in my console. Just, just ignore that. Oh, I don't want to put a not here. If there is an error for the color property, then you display it. So let's click submit and now notice that we get an error that pops up, right? Go ahead and select that, it goes away automatically. So pretty cool, really useful. And you can do the same thing up for the prompt up here. If I wanted to basically verify that someone always has a prompt selected, I could go ahead and do that. You must type a prompt. And then same idea, you must type the prompt. Go ahead and type in. So you kind of like get the, the boilerplate for your validation, like what you can do when stuff is invalid out of the box with this library. So it's really convenient. And I'm sure there's other things that this library provides that I just haven't really dived into. These are the main things you probably want to end up using. And then you probably end up having to write some type of custom validation logic if you have something strange going on or something unique going on with your forms. But overall, this is the library I'm basically using for my side projects. I find it very convenient to basically quickly spin up forms and add validation logic to it. So I definitely recommend that you check it out and try it for yourself. Anyway, that kind of wraps up all I wanted to talk about in this video. If you guys liked watching, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell icon. And I also have a Discord channel that you're welcome to join if you want to find a place to hang out with some other developers or just kind of ask me questions directly. If I have time, I will respond to questions. And I also have a newsletter where I plan to publish some tips and tricks for programming, web development that I suggest you subscribe to, which I might start publishing some stuff soon in the future. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.